see your stability. They need to know that you're going to be the same all the time. And I believe if we look at Father God, the Bible says he doesn't change. The Bible says he always keeps covenant. Right. The Bible, that's that's his nature, is that. So talking about bringing up a child and the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, it's not just being father-like, but it's also being his nature. So that all comes back to that stability. You're your kid's first superhero. When they look at you, they want to be you. And and so whatever you model in front of them, that's what they're going to mimic. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another amazing winning conversation. And today, as you can tell, we are celebrating a Father's Day special. This is a Woo. amazing Father's Day panel. Yeah, bring yeah. it in, guys. Come on, yeah, bring, yeah. It, bring yeah. it in. There yeah. we go. Yeah. There we go. All of yeah. us here are fathers. <laughs> Shocker for some of us. But to make sure that you guys know that and believe that, can you quickly introduce yourself and give your father resume? How many kids? <laughs> How are we doing here? Let's we'll start well, with you, Pastor Danny. My name is Danny Hill. And my wife and I have five children together. Wow. Wow. Well, my name is Pastor Justin Bridges, and um, my wife and I, we have a blended family. We have four kids, and uh, I love having three bonus children. So, Amazing. Pastor Phil? My name is Pastor Phil Thurman. I had three children of my own, I have six grandchildren and one great-grand. So you have a great, great, great you're the only great-grandfather here. Yes. That's amazing. Wow. That's that's awesome. I, in case you're curious, and I, I, I inherited a 19 year old yeah. when my wife and I got married and he's amazing. He's 24 now. So that's, yeah. that's where I'm at. So I've, I have a little bit of a different background than you guys do, but that's why today's conversation I think is so important. Um, and for those of you who don't know, we're, we're really trying to understand what it's like to be a father in today's world, but more importantly, a spiritual father. Like, what does that look like? Um, there's a lot of confusion on a worldly idea of what a father should be, how they should act. And like, I just want to, want to come to you first, Pastor, and just really ask you, like, what is the importance of a father in a child's life? Like, like the, what is the impact of a good father on a child? Yeah. Well, I believe we have to always go back to the word. Um, you know, the word tells us to bring a child up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Well, that sounds not like like really a terminology that i would necessarily use but if we can understand it this way that my role according to scripture is to bring a child up in a way that my life reflects god mm. that i'm the greatest representation the biggest representation of when they look at me i am a reflection of father god and that's what i should be portraying and that's what we're called to do as fathers and that's what we're called to do um, to because I believe the biggest issue in in society today is fatherlessness, mm. and so I believe as men as fathers, we need to come to a place where we are the greatest representation, the greatest reflection of our heavenly Father. And <clears throat> I mean, just practicals because I I love practicals when it comes to the faith. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that look like on your daily basis? Well, I think it. I think it works with communication. It has to work within, you know, the father. It talks about how if the father loves us, he corrects us. Mm -hmm. So it looks like love. It looks like kindness. It looks like a reflection of the fruit of the spirit. It's um, it's a reflection of just really God's nature. And His nature is one. He loves us, and because He loves us, He wants to bring us up to His level, and and so. I think it's an aspect, if we take another Christian word, it's it's discipleship. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the goal of discipleship is that you become like the master. You know, the ultimate, the goal of discipleship is you become like the one who you're discipling. So so ultimately, my role is not necessarily for, for Bryn to be or any of our kids to be like me. Yes, they should reflect some of my attributes, but ultimately, if I'm a reflection of heaven, ultimately, I'm wanting them to become like him. Mm. That's great. <clears throat> and we were talking about this a little bit before we started of just the idea of trying to be a parent without faith. To try and do life without faith just seems like an overwhelming, unachievable task. Mm -hmm. I think we've all banged our head against a wall or two. But you were saying, what does that look like to be a person of faith first versus a father second? I mean, 
everything points to the direction of God. Um, and when you try to do it on your own, it's very difficult because, you know, a lot of us were raised without fathers. Mm. And so trying to do it, you're just trying to learn on the fly um, and you're trying to, to put your kid in a, a good way to become successful. Um, but without having God in your life, it's very difficult to do that because when I was coming up, you know, my mom was the one who really uh, raised us. And there's only but so much <clears throat> a mom can give you um, as to becoming a man. So when I became a father, there's things that I had to learn on the fly. And a lot of times it caused me to make the mistakes I made because I thought that it was supposed to be a certain way when it was supposed to be according to what the word of God says. Okay. And so the more that I tapped into the word of God, I came with understanding that that's the greatest manual that I can have to becoming a great father for my children. Mm, yeah. That's great. And I think you probably have the most experience with this, Pastor Phil, when, like not a, a, a mother raising a son, but a father raising a son or a father raising a daughter. Those are just two completely different paths. And, and what's it like to parent both? Is there a difference or is there, you know, how do you go about like navigating those waters? Well, there, it's an extreme difference. Uh, you know, from my personal experience, uh, our son was the hardest one to raise, uh, was the most independent, and uh, we had more difficulty, you know, with our son than we did with our daughters. Uh, we have two daughters, and uh, both of them have have been much, much, much easier, you know, to raise. Where my son was uh, much more difficult. Not, not that he, not that he wasn't a loving. He loves his dad, and he still loves his dad, and 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 girls, you know, still love their dad and everything else. It, it wasn't, it wasn't that. It was just, it's just the difference between the boy, and uh, and the girl. Uh, Paul was very, uh, very aggressive uh, as a young man. Uh, the girls were a little bit more passive. Uh, Tiffany, which is the oldest daughter, she was a little bit more aggressive. But uh, uh, it, the, between the two of them, you know, it was a constant battle keeping them keeping them quiet. Between the two of them, we used to sit one on one side, one on the other side of the mother <laughs> of Diane, so that uh, they, we could have some sense of control because they were constantly pestering one another, Paul being the instigator most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> boys will be boys. Right? I, yeah. Boys will be boys. What are the odds? What are the odds? <laughs> and the reason I say that, because it kind of piggybacks on what I was talking with you, is that I, I think, and this is not a a, a a knock or anything disparaging to single mothers, but the best mother in the world is not a father. Right. Mm -hmm. And the best father in the world is not a mother, which is why it's so important that right. you have both those. Um, and kind of leads me to the next point that we just see a lot of, and I think you have very intimate experience with, is the blended family of today's, where you don't always get to start from zero. Like sometimes right. yeah, you, right. you marry into a family that kids that are there. How do you love kids and sh give them an example in that situation? Well, I think one thing to even, you even say, how is it easier to parent a, child, a, a girl or a boy? Mm -hmm. Or how, how do you parent them differently? I think really what we have to answer the question is, is well, un understand is that whether they're a girl or a boy, every child's different. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, right. you can you can have four children, two girls, two boys. And the thing is, is this daughter, you may have to treat like a treat, you know, it's going to be totally different. So, so it's not to me even have to do with whether the girls are boys. It's understanding that every child's different. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, if you have you, you have your first child and you're saying, oh, this child was is such a blessing. They never cried. They were so obedient. <laughs> and we're going to have a second one. And they're expecting that second one to just be just like the first one. And they're like, what happened? <laughs> you know, really, because because they have their own personality. Mm -hmm. They're not going to come out all the same personality. And, and there's nothing wrong with them because they have a diff different personality. It's just understanding as a parent uh, and this is what I learned from uh, from my wife, is that you are anointed for, gifted in grace with the anointing for the child, the children that God brings into your life. Mm -hmm. And so really it comes back to tapping into the spirit of God and the will of God 
on how to raise the child because you may correct this child and they run away and hide and are very submissive. Then you correct this child and that child talks back to you. You do this child and all they do is cry or you, you know, so, so it, it's, it's like, it's one of those things where they're not going to respond the same way to how you did it the first time mm. because they're unique mm-hmm. and God wants us to, what we're, what we're doing is, or goal to do is to direct them in the path of righteousness for their life. He, the Bible says that he takes us in the paths of righteousness for our namesake. But understanding this child's path might be different than this child's path. And also for us to all of a sudden assume the direction for their lives is also wrong. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is we're to help guide them into the direction and the plan that God has for their lives. And, you know, for me, um, you know, I made a lot of mistakes. I wish I could say I had a lot more victories as a father. And, <laughs> but, I, you know, it, it's, been, it's been a great journey. But I've also, I didn't have the opportunity to grow into fatherhood. Like you have a child and you see them in the diaper stage and you go to the next stage and then you next, go to the next stage. You know, I started off with having teenagers. And so I fell into the, the mistake of trying to be their friend instead of being the father mm-hmm. in that and also it kind of came over and and developed wrong patterns as a father of trying to do that with a, a younger child and so not you know so I, that's that's on me i'm not saying that blaming on the situation it was on me not necessarily really at first probably seeking the lord like i should have as a father to be that role and and um so that's kind of it i mean it, it's just one of those things where it's it's just uh thing that we're all growing as, as, as fathers, growing as believers. So, But I think it really touches on a, a poignant difference of authority and leadership mm-hmm. as a father. And I'm going to go back to you on this one, Pastor Phil. Like there is heavy as the head, you know, that wears the crown. And when it comes to leading the house, there's a leadership and there's an authority. And those are two different things. Like how did you try to navigate that when you were obviously still as like, uh, you know, still doing it. Yeah. I mean, our oldest is uh, 55 years old, and uh, second one is fifty, uh, going to be 53, and then our caboose is uh, 43. Is that her name, or is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a no. lively home. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't know if she'd like to know that she's the caboose, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. She, she, I, we know what she, she means. She likes to be called. Matter uh, of fact, she told us, she says, I, I, I'm the good one. Oh, the, the good, good one? one? Oh. Because we had no problems with her <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, the easiest to direct and to guide. Uh, but I, I think as as we uh, face the challenges, I, I agree with Pastor. I mean, I mean this you have to treat each one of them so differently uh, in their upbringing. Uh, Paul's was different than Tiffany's. Tiffany's was different uh, than Crystal's and... Uh, it it just it just seems like you just had to wear a different hat for for each one of them. But the main thing was is uh, as I I shared with my son at one point, I said, Paul, it doesn't make any difference what you do in life. Uh, your dad will always be there. I will always love you. You're you're one of my arrows that God gave to me. You're my seed, and. Uh, I will always be there for you. I may not always agree with uh, the things that you got involved in or have been involved in, uh, which I didn't. But nonetheless, I've been there for him, been there for Tiffany, been there for Crystal. And uh, I think that's what they they loved about their dad. I never tried to get them to be who I am as uh, as a a Christian uh, to feel like they had to be... uh, a preacher or a teacher or whatever, uh, wanted them to develop their own relationship, you know, with the Lord to help them to do that. And uh, uh, it, it worked out great that way. Uh, and I think they honored and respected that. And even to this day, they do. Even though they still do some things I don't uh, necessarily approve of. Sure. You know, or agree with. But, uh, you know, we trained them up in the way that they should go, not the way they wanted to go. Mm-hmm. You know, we had them in church. We had them exposed to all the, the right things um, and so forth. But we made mistakes along the journey. I, I agree with Pastor. I mean, 
I look at my mistakes as I was looking at the list. I, I thought, man, well, I've got to find some successes here, <laughs> you know, because there are so many things I recognize in myself that I was growing. I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I didn't have that example. Um, I, you know, lived in a divided family. My mother and dad divorced when I was four years old. So it was it was just difficult for me being raised. My mother ended up getting married two more times after that. My dad got married one more time. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was a difficulty for me because I didn't know I love my dad and I love my mother and it was it was hard to decide. Uh, so I was back and forth uh, between the two of them. I would spend two years with mother, one year with my dad, then back to to mom, just back and forth until my mother passed away when I was 15 and so it was just it was just a difficult childhood and not having Christ in it mm-hmm. even made it even harder because it was just a, a hard situation but so I had to learn um, how to be a dad by finding out what the Word of God has to say concerning a dad mm-hmm. to try to become just like God the Father uh, and I think the the key was is if you read the prodigal son, which most of us have, yeah. you know there was two prodigals in the family. It wasn't just one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the older brother was also a prodigal, but in a different way. Mm-hmm. But the father was consistent. He loved both of them equally and the same, but ministered to them differently, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So uh, I think for I hope that's answered your question. Yeah. It, you know, I just had to to learn, and I'm still learning. Uh, you know, as a father and as a grandfather uh, and a great-grandfather, it's even uh, more challenging. I think we're a little bit easier on the on the grandkids because oh. we have, a sh- have them a shorter oh. period of time. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely yeah. love those grands. So. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I can key on what he just said there at the end, the consistency and going into a blended family, um, knowing everyone experiences things in life um, as you're growing up. Um, and so stepping into that role, I asked the Lord, I was like, what is the biggest thing I can bring to my bonus children and bring into this marriage with Annette? Um, and the biggest thing the Holy Spirit told me was stability, stability. They need, right. you need, they need to see your stability. They need to know that you're going to be the same all the time. They need to know that it, it's like, it's not, there's not a different Justin on this day in the house than, than on this day of the house. But but Justin, when when something bad happens, he's going to respond the same way as if something great's happening. Not that you don't celebrate and and and, and correct any of those things, but the point is is there's not it's not showing like this, this these extreme up and downs in emotion in the house because you have to set the mode that this is this is this is this is a peaceful place. This house needs to be full of peace, and they need to stabi- see stability because they've seen too much instability. Um, in that, in in the in the division uh, in relationships, seeing how things transpired before, and I wanted I wanted them to know the Lord wanted them to know that it doesn't need to be that way. And it, and I believe if we look at Father God, the Bible says He doesn't change. Mm-hmm. The Bible says He always keeps covenant. Right. The Bible that's that's His nature is that. So talking about bringing up a child and the nurture and the admonition of the Lord is not just being father-like but it's also being his nature so that's all comes back to that stability that it's like hey i'm going to be the same monday i'm going to be the same tuesday wednesday thursday friday it's it's, i'm going to be the same and you can you can count on that you can count on the emotional stability of the house and i i think that kind of goes back to i think every father i know and you guys are here so there is a weight to our responsibility if we're in Christ, there, there's a, there's an accountability. That's a better, probably a better way to say it is we are to model. We mm-hmm. are to model the father mm-hmm. and our kids first idea of what God is like comes directly through our behavior. Yeah. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. and that is a weighty idea of, of a responsibility and accountability. Like, like, Lord, I have to be so tethered to you because if I don't look like you, they get a bad idea of who you are. And that's, so hard to navigate when you know when <laughs> we're humans and we're going to miss the mark occasionally um in that sense how how do you recover when you've made mistakes well honesty 
um, just letting them know, you know, because through your children, you'll see a reflection of yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, just seeing, letting them see my mistakes and my flaws, it also opened the door for me to allow them to grow into who they are to be. Right. Um, the first thing is, you know, you're your kid's first superhero. Mm -hmm. When they look at you, they want to be you. And, and so whatever you model in front of them, that's what they're going to mimic. And so I have to make sure that I'm always talking about the things of God. I'm always letting them, I'm, I'm always careful of how I speak to their mother in front of them. Yeah. Those type of things are very important because they're watching silently. Mm -hmm. And so they, they might not say nothing, but you will see them somewhere playing with their toys or something like that. And you'll find them saying things that you said. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they, and you're like, whoa, with that. So they're gonna mimic, you know, the things that you want to do. But as far as mistakes and things like that, it's it's letting them see that you know you have a dad that loves God, but as a man, we're imperfect. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think to add to that, just um, I think one of the biggest things that we face as men is pride. Yeah, mm -hmm. and. Um, and I think one thing that we may not have a tendency to do in front of our children or to our children is ask for forgiveness. Yes. You know, I, you know, I, um, you know, I apologize that I, I came across this way. Mm -hmm. I apologize that, you know, apologize to, to your spouse in front of them. Um, because it's, it's quick to, you know, put that wall up and just, not not apologize so but but it, it that's that's a key um and so so operating in the in the humility in the fact to knowing that you don't have it all together that you're you're learning you're you're growing um so i so i think i would add that as well of just watching you because i i think there's a lot of we can teach a lot we could we could there's a lot of things we could say um, and I may take this to the extreme is, is I try to model more than, more than I talk. And, and I know that could be, and that might be more my passive nature, but m my heart is 10 years from now, they're going to, they're going to see, they're going to remember how I modeled things, mm -hmm. not so much all the words that I said. And, and sometimes we can be a, a talking head. And, but are they seeing me do what I'm talking? Mm -hmm. can, they, can they see that? And so I, I think that's another thing is just modeling that humility and being able to say, hey, I'm, 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 I apologize. And that's huge because I think we, we all know when someone is a talking head. I think we, we, as kids, you see it real fast when words say one thing and actions say mm -hmm. something completely different. And, I, and I, again, especially with fathers, you know, a lot of fathers are do as I say, not as I do mm -hmm. mentality. I, I, the scripture that was re reiterated plenty of times in my house was spare the rod, spoil the child. <laughs> that was the first scripture we ever knew because it was told to us. Right. Because you knew something was coming. Um, and my brother's first scripture was don't lead us under wrath. So like, <laughs> there you go. like that was, our, yeah, that was our household yeah, dynamic. Don't provoke. Exactly. Like, don't provoke us under wrath. Yes. And so. And I go back to that someone is who, you know, was not the prodigal child, but kind of was the prodigal child. I've, I've, I've been able to kind of really look at things. And when fathers have an opportunity to model the Lord, it's, it's just amazing. And what that does, um, I, I kind of want to ask a question. And I want each one of you to answer it. So I want, I want time for it. But again, our, our, our motto in this church is making winners in life. But what I really, and I think it's so invaluable for the fathers and mothers listening to this to really understand like your guys's heart what makes a winner as a father like what does winning in life as a father mean to you and i want to start with you pastor danny man to, to what makes me feel as a winner is raising up my children in the fear of god not being afraid of god but having a reverence for god um and also operating like the father did with the prodigal son um Luke 15 tells us that, you know, when the son came home, the father, when he saw him afar off, he ran towards him. Mm -hmm. And so as a father, I always want to win in that area of letting my kids know that no matter what goes on, I'm coming to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come meet you where you are. And that's just the same as our father's love towards us. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel like I'm winning as a dad. That's amazing. 
Can I dub into there? Please, no. This is. Uh, I think one of the things, you know, as a pastor, uh, the kids have pressure from from the outside as well. Um, we expect them to live a certain way, act a certain way, and so forth in the household. But yet, there are many times that there's pressures from from being in the church. My children were raised in the church all of their life. Right. That's basically all that they knew. So there was an expectation by the congregation about the pastor's children. Mm -hmm. And so my kids would come to me and uh, say, you know, ask me, well, Dad, this is, this is what I'm expected, expected to be and do. And I say, listen, uh, Mom and I are Christians. We, we have a church. You see the good. You see the bad and you see the ugly. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to yourself learn how to decipher, and we'll help you with deciphering that, you know, in your life. But you have to be able to separate that the only thing that's being expected of you from your dad and from your mother is to honor and to respect, you know, who we are and what we stand for and uh, what the household, what the rules of the house are. And the rules of the house are basically... Uh, what God has to say concerning children and their respect and their honor to their parents, mm -hmm. to honor your father, honor your mother, uh, and so forth. But but most of all, you know, to develop a relationship between you and the Lord. Nobody can develop that for you. All we can do is present that opportunity and have you in the right place at the right time. Tiffany, at one point in time, she came to me because I did just about everything in the church. I was their bus driver. I was the principal of their school. <laughs> I, you know, I was their pastor. I was their dad. And Tiffany came to me one time and she said, she said, Dad, is there anywhere I can go that you don't go? Mm. I said, is there anywhere you want to go that you don't want Dad to be there? Mm. And she said, no, I was just asking the question because you're everywhere with me. Wherever I go, you're driving the bus when we make trips. <laughs> you know, you're, you're there at all the conferences that we go to. And uh, is there any place? I said, well, you know, you ought to count that as an honor because most kids don't get to have that, that their dad is there all the time, supportive of them as well. But I said, one thing I always uh, want you to remember is dad doesn't expect anything more out of you than I do out of Paul or out of, uh, you know, out of Crystal. And uh, she, she received that. You know, I would say winter in life as a father, I would say it's probably twofold. One, um, forgive yourself. Yeah. You know, um, forgive yourself for the mistakes that you've made. Yeah. But um, I think this is constant tension of, of you know, the Bible says, though a righteous man falls seven times, he gets up eight. I think it's, you know, you get up, you you repent of any of the mistakes that you've made, but continue to operate in that, navigating that life of discipleship with God. Because if you're not growing, your family won't grow. Mm -hmm. um, you're either going forwards or you're going backwards. So I would say, you know, as a, as a winning father is, continue to forgive yourself and continue to, to grow in him. Mm -hmm. Continue to pursue God, run after God. Because uh, it's when I do that that I'm molded, molded into his image. And so that would be what I would say. That's amazing. Wow. That's, that's great. Um, this has been such a wonderful conversation. Yeah, I, I want to say yeah. thank you so much for all of you being here. Just what you do at this church is truly appreciated by all of us. Like that are like we are so happy that fathers are in the place of fathers of this house. Um, each one of you just carry such anointing. And again, it is truly a blessing to be here. Um, and I want to say thank you for everyone yeah. listening. I'm sure that if you're listening to this, that you are a father or a mother, you've received so much. But specifically, we want to say happy Father's, happy Father's Day. Day. Right? Happy, happy Father's Day for guys. everyone who's watching. We are just so happy that you are here. Um, we're going to put in our show notes that we um, have men's meetings. If you're a father looking to meet more fathers or more men to help you along your journey, we want to support that. So we have an amazing men's meeting that happens monthly here. Um, and beyond that, thank you so much for joining us. We hope to catch you next week with another amazing winning conversation. Bye.